Hello, everybody, and welcome to Dishing with Stephanie's Dish, the podcast where we talk to cookbook authors and people in the food space that we just want to spend more time with and get their stories. There is a restaurant in Duluth that is a sandwich counter, I guess would be the best way to call it. And when you go to Duluth, people that I know actually will like beeline through the city navigate 35 just to get sandwiches at this place and i have been a fan for a long time and it is the northern water smokehouse and they finally come out with a cookbook smoke on the waterfront and it's funny because i got this book in the summertime i got an early advanced readers copy and i was so glad to get it in the summertime because it's kind of seasonal and it goes like by the seasons and I happened to catch it right at the end of the summertime when it was pickling season and you guys had some great recipes for canning and pickling things. So we have a, a group of folks with us today. We have Greg Connolly, we have Ned Netzel, and we have Nick Peliquin. We are delighted to have you guys. I've never had three author chefs all in the same space talking about one cookbook so imagine the talent that's in here it's probably not a good idea but we're doing it anyway <laughs> okay and you didn't the funny part about this and i don't mean to minimize it it is and you didn't start the restaurant no correct no none of us started the restaurant the guy that started the restaurant's name is eric gert uh, and he and his wife luckily handed off the project to us with his blessing and said you know I'm here as a resource for you, but um, ultimately uh, our other collaborator, Mary Tennis, and these guys are great writers. And so um, I think we all felt pretty honored that he just let us kind of take the reins and um, go for it. So that's what we did. What's cool about this cookbook to me is it has a real sense of place. So you're located in Duluth and you're cooking from ingredients of the North, which appealed to me. But also, it it doesn't feel like it's multi-voiced, even though I know it is. Like, it feels like you guys all have the same intellect and the same voice and the same passion with which you're doing things. So it would be hard for me to tell, like, oh, this is so-and-so's recipe or this is so-and-so's style. That's kind of cool. Like, you guys are all really aligned in this book. Yeah, I think that came from us really writing it together. You know, like... Maybe uh, initial parts of the process of compiling the recipes and, you know, reducing the size to the flow of it. You know, we we all like respected what everybody brought to the table and also like uh, what they lacked, you know, kind of filling in the gaps. So, uh, you know, an intro to a book or to a recipe might have been somebody wrote down what they thought made sense. And then we refined it together and talked about like, what is really the story of this? And then we asked questions like, how how does it relate to you know, the act of food preservation, or how does it relate to the city of Duluth or the region we're in or to regionally sourcing things? It was all all very collaborative throughout. So that that probably lends a little bit to it. And uh, moments where somebody really is writing from their voice are actually directly called out in the book too. Greg's got some, some moments in there. Looking on another cookbook and I've written one and it's not easy. Did you like, okay, you're going to do the intro. You're going to do the chapters. You're going to pick the recipes. You're going to write the intro to your recipes. Did you have all that work delineated or did you have like meetings? How did this all flow? So we would meet weekly, just us together. And, and we, we definitely parsed out some of the writing tasks, but it was really kind of all over the place as to like who's doing a recipe, who's doing an intro. And then we would come together and test together. And then sitting down and finalizing it was all together. So it was like a weekly meeting that we would all get together and, and, and review everything we had all written individually. Other, There's a lot of recipes in here. I keep thinking about like Thanksgiving time. And you've got kind of a lot of things that would be on a Thanksgiving table, like the green bean casserole and the mashed potatoes, but you've also got like the, the riettes. And then at the very end is sort of where you get into the sandwich sitch, which is sort of what you guys are known for. So I was curious that it was w very at the end, some of your like greatest hits. Yeah. You know, in our mind, sandwiches are not something you usually have a recipe for. Um, <laughs> although, you know, we're pretty precise. Like, we're not like 
some other places where you can come in and say, here's what I want on my sandwich. And, you know, they, they do it. Um, we don't do that. I mean, we'll put whatever you want on there within reason, but we carefully craft those sandwiches. And so, but I think that, you know, overall, it's like, we're kind of telling you how to do the recipes that lead to that sandwich. You know, we're not trying to tell you, yeah, make this exact sandwich out of your smoked salmon. You know, you can do that if you want to do what we, what exactly what we're doing, but also it's like, use your own flourish, use this for whatever you, and here's a suggestion on how to use it, but use it however you want to. Yeah. And we kind of, we kind of debated where to put that section to for a while. Yeah. It was kind of like, should it go in the middle and kind of be like this fold out highlight piece or like, does it make sense at the end or beginning or so it, we went back and forth to where where that should live because it, it is like a major part of what we do i feel like i should personally thank you specifically for the pork riette recipe <laughs> which one the, the well the one that's your basic and then i know you use it in the um the ricotta ravioli the not so spicy is probably the one i'll start with and you had more than one. Uh, Riette is something that like you see it on a charcuterie board. And s just speaking for like maybe non chefy people, like you're kind of like, oh, I don't know. There's a little fat there. But then it looks like there's this potted meat, which could be good, but I don't know. But once you like get turned on to that, it's like crack, right? You just love it so much. And I never felt like I could ever cook it. And I totally yeah. feel like I can do this recipe and I'm going to do it for Christmas time. Nice. Yeah. It's perfect. Like gift thing. Yeah. And it like stays forever. I'm, I wouldn't say forever, but no. yeah. <laughs> a we long le time. legally we can't. It seems a lot more intimidating than it actually is. You know, it's, it's almost more similar to a braise, you know, it's, it's like a comb feeding technique, right? So it's just meat, salt, and fat for a long time, you know? And, and so it seems like it there's a big skill gap there but it's 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 very approachable you know i loved it yeah. one other recipe that made it in the book that's like a six pager that i had in my book and then i took it out because i felt like i was posing and i wasn't the right person to put that in my book and you guys were was this whole like sourdough concept Oh, tell great. me about, yeah. So tell me about yeah. why you felt like you wanted to devote time in your cookbook to sourdough when so many people have like written bread books and all of that. Yeah, absolutely. And there, are, I think I even say in the re recipe that there are so many more comprehensive, probably better versions uh, than, than my version of bread. But I think the whole idea of putting that in there was initially when we started writing the book, we had the idea of calling it preservation because so many of the things that we're doing are not only um, preserving food, you know, so it doesn't spoil or so it will last longer um, or preserving yourself through the long winter months. So a bread recipe seemed like kind of um, something that would round out the recipes that we already had, you know, because we do make sandwiches too. Yep. It's like, well, I guess we should tell people if we really <laughs> want to be holistic, Let's tell them how to make bread too. Some to eat it on. Right. So I think that was really the the impetus for that. But then sourdough is a, a really, obviously it's having, it's had a moment uh, for the last few years, but it really is a cool thing. It, it feels like you're making something out of nothing because basically you're just starting with flour and water and you're attracting wild yeast to it and you're feeding that and you're making it into something. And then really the only ingredients are flour, water, and salt you know so it is really a cool then one of the ultimate forms of preservation when you know people learned how to cultivate grains and then they realized oh we can make this really stable food source for ourselves so we felt like that just made a lot of sense in, in the midst of everything else one other recipe that's in here that i was so glad that you included but i'm a little intimidated by and the first line of the recipe is the bane of our prep department's existence <laughs> it's Northern Water Smokehouse Boursin. So why did you guys feel like you should include that other than the fact that it's super delicious? Because it is a little more, requires a little more patience. I think it's just one of our mainstay like spreads in house. So it's, it's something that go, it pairs really well with a lot of the things we do. Like the smoked fish, for example, it's, it's perfect for. 
Yep. It's difficult in how tedious it is just by picking, just picking fresh herbs is really like the, the thing that people get hung up on a lot because it takes time to do, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. Once you get through that initial mise en place, that initial stage of the preparation, then it's, you're just throwing stuff in a mixer and, and whipping it together until it's a nice consistency. Um, but it's, yeah, it's really that just like tedious work up front that really throws people off and it makes it less of a favorite project to start because you, you know, you're going to be picking time for a good half an hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So are you all Duluthians? Uh, no, I'm from Northwest Wisconsin. So, so it's close. So close, but no <laughs> cigar. It's yep. much Ned and I are both uh, Duluthians though, yeah. What does it feel like to be, and I don't want to like embarrass you or make it like this weird thing, but you really have become, in my estimation as a Twin City and part of the home team for Duluth. Like people think of the restaurant and people think of you and think of the sandwiches and a while back, you guys had a more full service situation and now are kind of more back to the deli side. And th it must be a source of pride. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, we, uh, the three of us have worked for the business for a little while. And, um, but, you know, there's so many people that came before us. And of course, Eric, who founded the business. And so we're basically just kind of building off of uh, a lot of what they've done and um, trying to preserve that too, you know, trying to, just do things the best that we can and really have that be our North Star of like really trying to wow people. So it's a, it's an honor that people think of us when they think of Duluth. It's really powerful, I think. Mm. Certainly something we want to cultivate and actively wanted to cultivate with this book. We wanted to make this book uh, very much not about only, you know, Eric Gert and his story and his recipes and the business that came from it, but also uh, the place where, you know, we reside and uh, what has made us who we are. So. Well, I would say the goal is accomplished. Also, like, I feel like we're of the uh, people in Minnesota in particular, we're uniquely positioned about the preserving and the canning and because we have to get through these winter months, right? And yeah. so we're preparing our vegetables and creating kimchi and canning things and pickling things in order to get us through to the other side of the winter season. There's a lot of that in this book that I really loved. Is that like something that is in all of the recipes at the restaurant? It sure seems like most of it has some components of that. Yeah, it's kind of almost uh, by necessity because of how we're set up as a restaurant. Because, you know, we don't have a full kitchen here and we don't really have the that utility that comes with all those things. So we do have to kind of focus on things that we can prepare ahead of time and then something that's easy to, and quick to serve that's not necessarily going to go in a saute pan or, you know, a, a, a bunch of gas appliances because we're really restricted just in the old building that we're in. Um, and so that aspect of the business, but then, yeah, also the just the the area we're in and and the, the food that is kind of like the style of a deli is, is going to be geared towards kind of like making things last longer than than they would otherwise fresh yeah. you guys are undertaking a move it sounds like in the building do you want to talk about that sure um yeah we're actually in the midst be in there by this saturday so we just uh or friday even so we just, we're really steaming steamrolling towards that um yeah we uh you know have existed in this building at least our our deli proper has existed in a really a sliver of a space here and um, even when the pandemic happened and we had to close our doors, we ended up turning our entire space into a kitchen because it was the only way we could keep up with the increased business. Because we were on one of the only places open during COVID. We were open the entire time. And so we were we got a lot busier. And so we ne necessarily had to just turn that all into sandwich making. Once the pandemic kind of started to wane, then we had really no place to host anyone. Um, so you could sit out on our deck and you could sit in the hallway with in, on some seats and, you know, 10 seats or whatever we have up there. So this move is really the culmination of a lot of dreams over the years of just having more space, um, being able to host people more effectively, and then also being able to just try um, not only more food things, but also new ways of service and, and beverages and all that stuff. So. How do you so, see it coming together? Do you see it like as maybe a like fast casual kind of thing? 
Yeah, that's yeah, exactly yeah. exactly what it is. Yep. Um, it will just have uh, a little bit more space to do it with, uh, a little bit more space to host people. And a sticking point um, for some customers in the past when they would want to just get one piece of fish, but they'd have to get in a half an hour line of all these other people ordering sandwiches. Um, so it's really nice to separate out those those services. As a customer, I love that. <laughs> yeah, you get way better service on both ends. So it's just a lot lot more convenient for people to do it that way. So it's really exciting. Big thing for Eric is to make it a, a destination again. And when we were doing, you know, uh, window service and you weren't able to, as a customer, walk in and see your piece of fish, that kind of, I think, soured that a little bit for some people. I mean, our loyal customers have been with us because they just, you know, they know it's good food. But um, now that we have a place to be in, like a, a location that you can kind of, you know, experience rather than just waiting in a line, you know, maybe during the winter, hopefully we'll, we'll cultivate that again. Well, and I think a smoked fish purchase is kind of more straightforward maybe than like, you know, talking about sandwiches and people are sandwich nerds too. Like they want to yeah. talk about your sandwich. Yeah. Well, I think the, the, the deli side of things too, that's really one of the funnest things for us is that people on that side really want to talk about the food too. Even if they just are getting a piece of smoked fish, they, a lot of times people really, really geeked about food. We love talking to people about food. So if a customer comes in and wants me to tell them all about the white fish that we have, I'm really happy to do that. I love talking about food. So that part is so fun for us. Um, and I think even more so than talking about sandwiches, just talking about the components of those sandwiches that we make all of in-house. So it's really fun. There is two things to tell you. One is you inspired a recipe in my book, which is a white fish trout spread. Nice, sweet. It, the story that I attached to it was actually being with my niece who went to UMD for college and she wasn't very adventurous of an eater. And she got the love of the smoked fish in Duluth as a college student. And we went to Fitkers and we were sitting there eating and she said, does anybody want to split the smoked salmon dip? And I was like, what? Who are you? And then she was like, have you, she wanted to like really talk about like, have you had the smoked trout at Northern Waters? I'm like, yes, I have. <laughs> I've used it to make dip and it's like a holiday staple. So you have inspired a lot of people with your smoked fish. Yeah. But, you know, that's kind of another thing, too, is that we really want people to come to us, you know, and that's part of being like Duluth, you know, is like Duluth is not a suburb of the Twin Cities. Duluth is the major metro in the northern part of the state. And we probably have kind of a chip on our shoulder about that um, because we're not like, you know, Blaine or something like that. Like we are a, a small city of our own and we have our own thing going on that isn't St. Paul or it isn't um, Rochester or whatever. So we want people to come here and experience what we have to offer. We're not, you know, like you can get a lot of great food in the Twin Cities. We can get some great food up here and we're part of that. So we want people to experience that as well. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because I produce the Art and Bayfront Park culinary market that we do there. Yeah. And I really have like gotten front and center with a lot of cool Duluth makers, both from the art side but also the food side. And, you know, we hear a lot about Duluth and the cool like outdoor scene and the mountain biking and all the stuff that they're working on. But damn, I mean, the beer scene alone and the distilleries and the craft that's happening in food and ice cream and hot sauces. And I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff happening. And I feel just it's so cool to be a part of that. And I'm glad that my work on that festival can bring people like front and center with businesses that maybe they don't know about in Duluth because there's a lot of cool things happening. Yeah, agreed. And and for us as a business that's pretty well established and pretty well respected, we also want to foster other food businesses and help them as much as we can because all of that um, strengthening of our food scene here just strengthens all of us. So we really want people to be successful and to bring really cool new things to food in Duluth. Okay, so we're going to play a game. It's not going to be hard, but it's kind of going to be maybe like picking your favorite child or pet. So each of you, I've got an opportunity to have three of you in front of me. 
I, the game is, I would like you to tell me a favorite restaurant in Duluth, and it can be whatever, and also a product that's made in Duluth that you're obsessed with. Ooh. Is it specifically a food product? Not necessarily, no. Okay. Hmm. Well, I think my favorite restaurant at the moment is Fullholic on Central Entrance. Damn it, that's what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty banging spot right, right these days. Um, and serving but, pho, I'm assuming. Yeah, so they do pho and other Vietnamese stuff. It's, yeah. it's so good. As far as a product made in Duluth, man, that's that's tough. I would say honestly, the beer. It like it's it's hard to choose one of the the breweries, but like we we're kind of spoiled for choice up here. I mean, Bent Paddle is like a standby, you know. And it's funny to go down to the Twin Cities or even major metropolitans and like see Duluth beer on tap at places. That's a big source of pride, and I think is what people think of Duluth too. You know, is we're a big craft beer town. So, yeah, yeah, I think that Ursa Minor, too, is starting to make inroads into the Twin Cities. Their beer, I had a lot of different versions this summer. It was really great. And they have a great tap room, too. Yeah, totally. Okay, Ned, that leads us to you. Oh, gosh. We might have to come back to me. I'm... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I probably eat out the least of anybody here. Yeah, I don't know, Greg. Yes, All right, Greg. Lot. Sure. Um, I probably would have said Faholic, but... I'm gonna t I'm gonna do a two way tie. Uh, there's a place called Oasis del Norte. Love it. It's the only place that makes street tacos in Duluth, and so that's really a great thing to have. And then um, in my neighborhood of Lakeside, there's a place called Lake Superior Brewing, oldest microbrewery in Minnesota at one point, uh, the first established one. Um, but they changed hands after a number of years, and then they moved to the Lakeside neighborhood, and they do. Pizza, smash burgers are kind of their main entrees, uh, which they just do really good versions of those. They do like a brick oven style New York pizza that nobody in town does. So that's kind of cool. Um, but they also do a lot of really nice, thoughtful um, appetizers and great wines to go with some of their food, along with the really um, good beer that they're brewing. It's really great to have that nice option in my neighborhood. So I really, I really appreciate that. I love um, it. Then, All right, Ned, are you ready? That leads us yeah, to you. I, I, think, I think so. Uh, it's it's really hard for me to pick a restaurant um, because I do most of my eating cooked at home or uh, with my my free daily meal uh, when I'm working. Sure. But but one thing that kept coming up in my mind was Johnson's Bakery, which is a bakery down in what would you call it, Lincoln Park area. It's like just yep. behind really awesome bread. Um, a lot of our specials back when we were open to the public uh, in the old space used johnson's bakery bread so yeah johnson's bakery love their donuts they're like uh such a great deal please don't raise your prices guys so yeah johnson's bakery and then uh something made in duluth the the coffee made in duluth is really great uh, in addition to like the the brewing scene there's also a great like roastery scene um we love a lot of them there's like duluth coffee company there's uh underwood coffee who most of what we uh, give to our staff to to fuel us through the day uh, is either Underwood or uh, Dream Cloud Roasters. I want to thank Ned Netzel. I want to thank Nick Pelliquin, uh, Greg Conley for joining me. The book is Smoke on the Waterfront. It's the Northern Water Smokehouse Cookbook. What I loved is you guys just recommended all places that I have never even heard of. And I have spent quite a bit of time in Duluth. So way to go. I appreciate you being here. I'm excited about the book. It is Smoke on the Waterfront. Make sure that when you head to Duluth, and you should head to Duluth this winter. There's so many cool activities that happen there. And of course, in the summertime, you can come and visit me at Arden Bayfront Park in August. And there's just a lot of cool, cool music festivals that happen down in Canal Park and at the Bayfront area. And Lincoln Park is a whole new area to discover for a lot of people. So it's the Northern Water Smokehouse Cookbook. If you are into smoking or canning or preserving, or you just love a damn good sandwich, make sure you pick up the cookbook. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. Thanks so much.